Welcome to Deep Cuff Channel. Explosion sounds were heard in one of the most important blasts of Ukraine. Ukrainian army continues to fight heroically. Latest news from the front is quite interesting. Russia has started to accelerate its operations, especially in the southern and eastern regions. There are signs that Russia is preparing to carry out a major air strike. Satellite photos have been published. So what does Russia plan to do by increasing its troops in the southern region? Crimea is still Ukraine's first target. Sergei Lavrov and Mitro Kuliba made very important statements about the war. NATO took a new decision for Ukraine. Conflicts in Ukraine have become more intense than ever before. According to the statement made by the General Staff of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, the Ukrainian army struck many important points in Russia, using ground and artillery units, as well as the Air Force. While the Russian losses as a result of these attacks were announced as 560 soldiers, one tank, five armored combat vehicles, and two artillery systems, it should be noted that research continues to clarify the exact losses. After these attacks, the explosion sounds from the Donbass region attracted the attention of the soldiers of both countries. According to local sources, Russian troops tried to organize organized operations involving ground troops as well as missile and artillery units to advance in this area and push the Ukrainian troops further west. However, it is stated that Ukrainian troops repelled six attacks that Russian troops tried to carry out. Ukrainian army, which succeeded in repelling these attacks, reacted quickly and ordered the air force to attack. Following this order, Ukrainian warplanes took off, and by launching a total of 16 airstrikes on the regions and fronts under the control of Russian troops, they managed to inflict great damage on the Russians. As a result of these attacks, while most of the defense areas under the control of the Russian region were destroyed, Russian troops became more vulnerable to air and missile attacks. Having trouble in land air defense, Russia started to move its warships away from the region, especially in the Black Sea. According to the press service of the Naval Command of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, Russia moved six warships stationed in the Black Sea away from the region to the east of the Black Sea. According to the published military reports, it is stated that Russia currently has zero ships in the Sea of Azov, nine ships in the Mediterranean, and three ships in the east of the Black Sea. Russia aims to be minimally affected by a possible Ukrainian attack by disbanding its navy to a large extent. Since the Ukrainians are aware of this strategy of Russia, they are taking their precautions. Knowing this, Russia was quick to respond. Head of Dnipropetrovsk Oblast, Valentin Reznichenko, reported that on the morning of the 30th of November, missile and artillery units serving in the Russian troops carried out a total of 30 artillery attacks on the Nikopol region of the Dnipropetrovsk region. According to Reznichenko's statements, no damage was caused as a result of the attack. Bakhmut, which is a critical region in the north of this region, is much more important for Russia. Russia has made a serious military stockpile in this region in recent months. But even if Russia takes the city, it could bring its own troops to the point of exhaustion. Also, Russia needs more soldiers, weapons and ammunition to hold this region even if it takes over. Bakhmut is located in the Donetsk region, the industrial center of eastern Ukraine. As the approaching winter season will affect these regions first, the crisis experienced by Russia may escalate. In particular, a major attack of the Ukrainian army in the Crimea region can guarantee the defeat of the Russian army. Last GLSDB ammunition supplied to Ukraine by the U.S. military may also guide the Ukrainian army for the Crimean offensive. Because the Ukrainian army, using these ammunition, can hit the Crimean peninsula from 150 kilometers away, GLSDB's deliveries to Kiev could begin next year. This is a sign that the conflicts in Crimea will intensify in a short time. On the other hand, Russia continues not to give up missile attacks on the infrastructure of the Ukrainian army. By damaging Ukraine's infrastructure, Russia aims to impede or halt the progress of the Ukrainians. 
Russia's missile attacks are mobilizing Western countries to strengthen Ukraine's air defense. Making a statement in this context, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said that Ukraine is preparing a strong countermeasure against Russian forces and is planning new solutions against the ongoing attacks on Ukrainian infrastructure. While the president did not go into detail on what the countermeasure will look like, he said that Kiev is focusing on issues in the Crimea and other frontline areas, as well as the Donetsk, Luhansk, Warkiv, Zaporizhia and Kherson regions. Following Zelensky's statements, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken made a statement to CNN. We are reviewing all options to ensure that Ukrainians get what they need and what is most effective for them. Some relate to Soviet-era systems in service. We are working on all issues, Blinken said. Following these statements, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and head of the Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs Dmitro Kuliba met to discuss air defense systems and ammunition plan to be sent to Ukraine. Meeting took place on the sidelines of the meeting of foreign ministers of NATO member states in Bucharest. Dmitro Kuliba had previously confirmed that there were some talks about the transfer of American Patriot air defense systems to Ukraine. As will be remembered, the Pentagon announced that the United States was considering the possibility of sending Patriot systems to Ukraine to support its air defense against Russian attacks. After the meeting between the two, the United States made a game-changer statement for Ukraine. Pentagon said in Washington that it had awarded Raytheon a $1.2 billion contract for six NASIMS air defense systems for Ukraine. United States has approved sending a total of 810 ASIMS to Ukraine to fend off Russian missile and drone attacks. Ukraine received the first delivery of two NASIMS air defense systems in November. Others will be delivered in the coming months after they are built. NASIMS is the latest of several air defense capabilities we have delivered to Ukraine, said Bill Laplante, Secretary of Defense for Procurement and Sustainability. Delivery of NASIMS systems to Ukraine caused serious reactions on the Kremlin front. Sergei Lavrov made statements at a press conference in Moscow. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said that the West has a real chance to avoid conflict in Ukraine, but they do not want to seize this opportunity. Lavrov's statements followed the NASIMS agreement signed between Ukraine and the United States. Russia is aware that with the entry of these systems into the Ukrainian inventory, the effectiveness of missile attacks on the front will be reduced to a minimum. To prevent this, Russia took a critical step. According to satellite photos, Russia is preparing for new airstrikes with cruise missiles on Ukraine. Published photographs of the Engels II airport, located within the administrative borders of the Russian Federation, show that the Russian army has deployed a total of 12 bombers to this base. Two 95 and two 160 bombers are clearly visible in satellite images. Additionally, satellite images show the presence of at least five cargo planes in the vicinity. Sighting of cars used to carry cruise missiles also indicates that cargo planes are distributing ammunition to the bombers. By using these planes, Russia wants to hit the Ukrainian army without entering the range of the air defense systems delivered to the Ukrainian army. Since the Engels II base, where these aircraft are deployed, has been used for large-scale bombings before, it is obvious that Russia is in great preparation. Ukrainian army is aware of this strategy of Russia and has started to take precautions. Victory to Ukraine. We will continue to monitor the world and especially Ukraine. We'll see what happens in the next few days. We have reached the end of another video. You can support us by liking the video. You can easily follow new videos by subscribing. I wish you all a war-free day. See you.